Hello, hello everyone and happy Thanksgiving. Am I right? It was horrible. I'm sorry. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone who is uh, celebrating it today. Um, and uh, whether you are in the States or anywhere else and celebrating it with your family, but still taking uh, time to come here and watch the stream. Thank you so much. This means a lot to us. And uh, as much as I am particularly myself, they do not celebrate uh, Thanksgiving as it is not a tradition in Poland, in the country where I'm from. I heard a lot about this. Of course, I know about the, I know about the turkey. You need to like suck the blood from the turkey on this particular date, if that's what I remember right. Uh, but uh, also, of course, you need to um, tell everyone what you are thankful for on this particular day. So I am very happy to join on that tradition because it seems to be very nice. And I want to say that I am thankful for everyone who came here today, uh, even though this is a, a special holiday for you guys. Uh, that's also why we don't have Jason Carl in the chat today, because he's celebrating with his family. And uh, I am also super thankful for all my folks from work who are super, super supportive and really nice to spend time with. So <laughs> that's uh, going to be my little uh, Thanksgiving Thanksgiving introduction to the show, uh, which is going to be really fun today. We're going back to our uh, more usual schedule, let's say, for the time being, um, for probably just this week or maybe the next as well, where we are actually going to cover news from a lot of the different sides of World of Darkness, including board games, card games, and music in particular. Uh, today we're going to uh, have uh, Rosina, who I actually interviewed on the recording yesterday. I have the interview for you guys today and I really hope that you will enjoy getting a little bit more of the glimpse into making of the soundtrack of Shadows of New York. And we're going to also talk about Vampire the Masquerade Heritage, Vampire the Masquerade The Eternal Struggle and Steam Awards, which are coming pretty soon and um, which you can actually participate in and vote for some of the World of Darkness games. I also have a beautiful picture of the upcoming vinyl for uh, Shadows of New York soundtrack to share with you guys and I hope that you will enjoy today's content. Of course, if you're waiting for tabletop news and uh, the TTRPG material with Vampire the Masquerade Companion, uh, just to, for those of you guys who missed the big news show where we were talking about that, feel free to uh, check out our YouTube channel where we archive these shows. But uh, the Vampire the Masquerade Companion introducing Salurbrit, Simitsi and Ravnos is going to come to you before Christmas this year. So we will still cover it pretty deeply in December and you're going to have uh, some TTRPG content to enjoy during the Christmas break or holiday break, depending on what you are celebrating. I am going to right now leave you with Rosina and uh, actually with myself, but from yesterday and with Rosina and uh, let's get a little bit more glimpse into Shadows of New York composing of the music. Uh, just to give you a very quick background on Rosina, she is going to introduce herself in the interview, of course, but I'm just super proud that not only for the game that is uh, that has this really, really strong female energy because of Yulia, who is a Polish immigrant into the United States, we have a Polish female composer who is uh, also a wonderful cellist. And you can find a lot of her wonderful music on YouTube, on Bandcamp, which she prefers a lot, and Spotify and, and iTunes and other streaming platforms. But uh, yeah, she, she is something, guys. I absolutely involved evolved, involved, evolved, absorbed, that's probably the better verb, <laughs> myself in her music for the past uh, long time. She's been one of my uh, major Spotify streamed artists in, in the back uh, in the past two months and I absolutely enjoy what she's doing. If you have not heard it yet, we're going to talk about it later, but now Rosina. Hello everyone and welcome Rosina. Did I actually pronounce it correctly, Rosina, to our stream? Yes, that's correct. That's perfect. Karolina, that's her real name, she's from Poland and she's the main composer for Vampire the Masquerade Shadows of New York soundtrack. Uh, could you give us a little bit more of an introduction of yourself and uh, tell our community uh, what was your history in music and how did you land up as the composer for this game? Uh, so I'm a classically trained musician. Uh, I have this whole classical background. I'm a cellist, primarily I'm a cellist. Uh, also uh, for many years I was singing in many, many choirs. 
Uh, but uh, what I've learned that qu quite quickly, uh, uh, it was that I didn't want to work in a classical music environment. But I also wanted to play cello. So it was kind of a difficult way for me to find uh, a right path to not stuck in the classical music. Um, because I also didn't study mm -hmm. classical composition. Uh, but I started playing with some alternative Polish rock bands and more and more and more. And finally, uh, I also started writing my uh, music, which was mostly influenced by uh, rock, alternative rock music, but played on cello. That's awesome. So that was the beginning. And uh, then I decided to release an album. I found a great uh, label uh, in UK. It's a Fat Cat Records um, 13701. It's a sub label, mm -hmm. uh, which is specialized in post classical music or music which is played on classical instruments, but it isn't classical music. Mm -hmm. um, and I released three, two albums with them and one album with remixes. And I'm working on some more uh, stuff currently. But also, I was involved in music for theater performances and music for films. So I always try to divide my work between my own composing, like composing for me as a performer and for a, find a place for a composer who also works for other uh, people for film or theater. Yeah, and Shadows of New York is actually the very first video game uh, to which you composed music. How was this different than any other thing that you made before? Mm -hmm. I must say that the difference is quite huge because the uh, very first thing for me it was that when I learned that how much music mm -hmm. uh, I have to compose, it, it is really a lot of music and it, it's a lot of different music, different styles. Of course, I have to try to capture everything in one style, my own style, but it's a lot of different music, where, and usually you don't have so much space for music in, uh, in theater or, or film. Uh, and there is also space for, I would say, both type of music. I mean, um, it's more abstract, more like sound design music. And there is also space for really juicy themes, like uh, for, a, for a certain, um, hero of mm -hmm. a game, like in this case, it was Julia. Yeah, or actually, it's it's funny how um, when you talk about those those ambiences and very juicy themes, I think a lot of our audience can actually empathize with this a lot after playing Bloodlines, which was the um, original big soundtrack that uh, was one of the reasons why the game turned out to be so cult classic and so popular in the end. Uh, so Rick Schaffer, uh, have you ever heard his music uh, before yes. making music for Shadows? Yes, of course, of course. When I learned that uh, I would have a possibility to write music for Shadows, um, that was the first thing when I started uh, digging uh, for very different uh, music for video games. Of course, it was Rick Schaffer, but... and. Of course, I think that was the first thing which I've checked, and because I knew, of course, I knew before um, uh, because before I started working, I knew about his soundtrack. Uh, but also, I discovered that some of my favorite composers did soundtrack for games, like for example Ben Frost, mm -hmm. uh, and many surprises met me on this path. Where, My where, uh, where, that's great. Yes. Can I ask uh, which soundtracks were your favorite before you, you went to, to make the music for Shadows of New York? Which ones were your inspiration? Oh, that's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, it's really hard to say because I was picking pieces from very, very different uh, types of games, even. Um, it's hard for me to say, but for, for sure, I, I've, I've tried to be maybe not too close to Rick Schaffer's soundtrack because I wanted to do very my own thing, mm -hmm. very, very in my own style. 
but I would say I, I came back, uh, I think, the most often to his soundtrack to somehow stay connected with this world. Absolutely. And that's great because that's a very, very good inspiration to have. And I feel like you've made it into something completely your own. Um, that uh, people who play Shadows may enjoy. But uh, uh, speaking of uh, Shadows, of course, the theme is Vampire the Masquerade. Um, what was your introduction to the system and how did Draw Distance help you with getting the theme right? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, they were very, very helpful because um, I received, I would say, two types of information. First thing was obviously the the whole um, background about the world of darkness world, um, including very famous book, which I found on my own shelf. <laughs> and I didn't know about it before I started working on game that I have this book, which is one of the very, very first uh, issues of the, of the book Vampire the Masquerade. I have the same at uh, home, also in Polish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I discovered that I have this uh, very, very important type of materials at my own shelf. Uh, so yes, that was that was one type of uh, information which I received that I really need to learn a lot about it. But another thing, it was kind of a more uh, artistic pop culture background more abstract ideas which we would like to put into the game and we would like to emphasize them with music also so there was there was a lot of discussions about all very different ideas mostly cultural ideas it's even hard for me to say it in english but it's it's a very wide subject you know it, it we had many interesting discussions uh, about other artists, other music. Uh, so for me, it was really, really interesting because I didn't expect we will um, dive so deep into this around vampire sure. themes. I I'm actually very much curious. Uh, could you share a little bit of a secret of what were the inspirations, the cultural inspirations mm -hmm. for the soundtrack? Um, I think for me, it was really important that the um, the main hero is uh, is a female hero, mm -hmm. just simply. And I would say that uh, generally the um, the figure of a female protagonist, which is not easy to classify, is uh, still. Um, still kind of an open subject in our culture mm -hmm, that's true and that helped me to not be closed uh, not to close myself in some certain ideas uh, but i would say that mostly we were talking about um, musical inspirations also and to what i have learned that we uh, love to listen to many uh, same artists, for example, and that um, music, which was kind of reference for the soundtrack game, it was of music of my favorite composers also. So that was a really nice surprise for me. So coming back to Yulia very quickly, I uh, personally love this character. Not only she's a Polish woman, uh, but also she represents the clan La Sombra, that is the clan of shadows, of Darwinism. And the whole theme of the game, because of her mostly, is super dark. How did you approach making music for such a dark, shadowy theme of the game? Okay, so I think that... Um the situation that i was offered uh, this job <laughs> was simply because it's kind of my natural environment shadow uh, this and type, darkness <laughs> sh shadowy music making that this type of music because what i was always uh, interested in making music it was uh, balance balancing on edge of uh, darkness and kind of beautiful style mm. so it was mixing two very very different sides of music into one and 
making music for the soundtrack, writing music for the soundtrack was a great opportunity to dive more and deeper into the dark side That's of good. this type of my own balancing. And um, I always wanted to do this, actually. I, my process of my own uh, creating music for myself, for my performances, for my albums, was simply getting more and more darker. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it somehow uh, fits very well in my uh, in my own development as an artist. So that's great. I was super happy. I was just super happy that it's exactly this this type of mood which I'm interested in right now. That's super interesting. And uh, actually, people where to 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 find you, Google you, and find your live performances. Uh, you, in majority, you're a you're a cellist. You play cello, but um, there's a lot of electronic music as well uh, involved in uh, in the process of creation yes. of of the soundtrack. So, how do you approach it technically? How does making a track for a soundtrack Exodus of New York look like from the scratch? Mm -hmm. So at first I would say it's very different from my uh, pieces which are designed for live performance because like playing live means I do not use, for example, many synthesizers on stage. Mm -hmm. I mostly um, do a bass for my live perform performances on, on cello and on looping my cello. But when you create a music for a soundtrack, it uh, doesn't matter if it's film or a uh, video game in, the, in that case. Um, it led you to uh, just over uh, make, so, make so many layers of different instruments that you don't have this um, thought in your head that you have to create the same things on stage. So actually that, that helped me to feel more uh, free, just yeah. simply free. And uh, automatically it helped me to use many different instruments which I don't use on stage, which mostly were synthesizers and very, very much processed voice, very, very much processed uh, cello also. Uh, and a lot of hardware, mostly effects. So from the scratches, I would say that I um, mostly I recorded all the tracks by myself, all the layers by myself, except uh, two pieces. Um, sorry, not two pieces. It was more, but except two other people who were involved in the process. Mm -hmm. It was a producer, typical electronic music producer, who helped me with some. Uh, more like typical techno music and my friend drummer who did a, a classical drum beats in a few pieces but mostly it was uh, in the end of the process of composing and the beginning was usually uh, just recording a synthesizer mm -hmm. synthesizer was the first layer usually and what i also tried to do and which is i believe not so common uh, in uh, game soundtracks that I wanted to record a whole track as a live track. Oh. I didn't build it from um, uh, small elements, which helps to, for example, divide it later. Uh, but I decided to record most of the tracks live, like with uh, no cutting, too much, uh, just to have this feeling, <clears throat> to keep this feeling of uh, small unexpected changes, which often happen when you play and record something live. And That's it's fascinating because I yeah. heard actually from mm -hmm. one of your past interviews that you do record, for example, some tracks on your albums completely live. Uh, yes. without any cuts and uh, I mean I think this is super bold move for video games <laughs> and I applaud you for the bravery for doing this but it really turned out super great and uh, because of that I, I need to ask you now because I know that you've been playing a bit of Shadows of New York uh, was there any moment so far that you've seen in the game that you experienced it yourself where you thought holy shit this particular track works so well at this moment <laughs> 
yes i mean um <laughs> it's funny but i felt it like almost uh, <laughs> every moment and it's not only because i think music my music is so great it's just the connection mm -hmm. uh, the connection between uh what i can read what i can see on the screen and music uh because until i i haven't played it i really couldn't imagine how it could work together of course i i knew the mechanics i i knew some technically basic stuff about it but it's always kind of surprise uh how it works in the end when it all comes <laughs> together right it's amazing <laughs> yeah yeah it that that's also a difference between film and uh, game soundtracks because in a film you can quite easily quite quickly realize how it works with the picture and here it was a bit different situation we we i had to rely on my intuition a bit more and also stay in touch with uh, other um, creative people involved in the process. Uh, all right, Rosina, I'm super happy that it came out together so well and that you actually managed to take this bold step uh, into the video game music composing because it turned out awesome. And I'm very happy that uh, Vanily can uh, experience your soundtrack this way. Uh, so for people who get to know you through the soundtrack and through this particular game, what's the best way to follow your other creations, to find your other creations online and find you online to see what you're going to cook in the future? Uh, so basically, I'm still working on my web website <laughs> for many years now, I can say. <laughs> Uh, so unfortunately, I can also uh, only invite you to visit my uh, Facebook page, for example. But I hope the, the website will really start working next year, at the very beginning. Uh, usually, um, in the past, I was playing quite a lot live gigs. This year, of course, has changed everything. And I probably in the future, I will also try to work more in the area of, uh, for example, video game or film music. But uh, I really miss playing live shows. And I I had a chance to play uh, many shows in Poland, but also abroad. Uh, because prob probably because of my label, which is based in UK. I've seen some uh, of your shows on YouTube, by the way, I really recommend you guys to, to Google them, but they are wonderful. So I wish that uh, one day this whole world situation is going to end and I will be able to attend your show live. And also we can hear your music on Spotify and various uh, streaming websites as well, right? Of course, of course, yes, yes. Uh, obviously, um, my music is in all popular streaming websites and yeah it's it's available actually everywhere of course i recommend you also bandcamp mm -hmm. which is al always a good way to support your favorite artists mm, yeah i would say that's my my favorite type of streaming even uh, not only buying albums but also listening to and learning about new music uh so yeah mostly bandcamp i would recommend that's great uh, so guys, go to Resilience Bandcamp and uh, listen to the soundtrack of Shadows of New York, which is going to be available on vinyl very soon. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, you, were, um, you were able to join us today and that you shared all of these insights about making music for Vampire the Masquerade games. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. So that was Rosina, and I really hope that you guys enjoyed this little interview. Uh, I'm extremely proud that not only we were able to um, to have such a good soundtrack for Shadows of New York, but also that it's being composed by a Polish composer and cellist. And if you want to support her, you can go to Bandcamp right now and uh, check out her albums. And also, I have uh, something really nice to uh, announce for tomorrow. We're going to have the release of Shadows of New York soundtrack on vinyl, uh, which is going to to 
be wonderfully violet. <laughs> I just love, love the color of this. Um, not sure if you guys uh, um, remember uh, the, the back few months ago, uh, there was also a release from Milan Records and Warner Music uh, that had Bloodlines 1 soundtrack from Rick Schaffer on the red vinyl. So if you want to fill your collection with more Vampire the Masquerade vinyls, this is the one. And uh, yeah, I, I am personally absolutely planning to get a turntable once I will get a b bigger space, because currently I don't have much, unfortunately, uh, just to have these wonderful vinyls on it and uh, display them. Even if I won't listen to them every single day, I just want them on display. So if you want to get more information about uh, uh, this vinyl and the release tomorrow, we're going to pass it on social media and you can follow Draw Distance, which is the developer of Shadows of New York and Coteries of New York, if you want to have... Uh, uh, basically first-hand information about that. Uh, they also posted the link to where you will be able to buy the soundtrack. You can also buy the digital edition, so um, it's also available, but if you are uh, one of uh, the, the collectors, the music collectors in the chat, then uh, the vinyl is there for you. And holy damn, it looks good. <laughs> and speaking of uh, Draw Distance, Shadows of New York, and Coteries of New York, I would like to take a little bit of your time today to talk about Steam Awards. Uh, Steam Awards, which were uh, shared uh, by um, by the... Uh, it is, is, there we go. I, I have two slides for it for some reason. But yeah, both of them are great because we're going to start with this one. And uh, Steam Awards uh, nominations uh, started on uh, on Steam and Draw Distance shared the tweets and shared the post in which they really, really ask you very nicely to vote for their games. So whichever you feel like is your favorite uh, for the outstanding story rich game. Of course, there's a lot of um, uh, competition in this uh, in these awards because basically this conveys all of the Steam games released in 2020. So that means you can also vote for Werewolf the Apocalypse Heart of the Forest. And of course, because of today's interview, I would love to tell you to also vote for Shadows of New York as the best soundtrack, as uh, this is something that uh, we, um, we we feel like Rosina really deserves. And uh, if she can get the nomination for Shadows of New York for the best soundtrack on Steam, I, I would be super happy. <laughs> so uh, I voted already. All you need is a Steam account and uh, check out the Steam Awards. There's a lot of categories that you can uh, vote uh, in for your game. And the uh, World of Darkness games released this year were Countries of New York, Shadows of New York, Heart of the Forest, and Night Road. So whichever of these games uh, you feel deserves any of the awards, uh, feel free to support them and spread the word because the developers are going to be super happy to um, to to let you know. So yeah, please let me know if uh, uh, which one is your favorite and which one you know it for what. Uh, I recommend soundtrack for Rosina for for the best soundtrack on Steam, and that's for sure where my vote is going. And I also have some board game news for today, and uh, that is actually a pretty good end of the year for World of Darkness board games, because uh, I've been just, you know, watching a bit on, on Twitter how people were uh, talking about various family things, and I've seen some people receiving the copies of their games. For example, Vampire the Masquerade Heritage. It's uh, being shipped currently to the backers and retailers, and uh, developers will also join us on the stream next week to talk about this. Uh, just to give you a pass you an information from the developers uh, as I was asking them about particular delivery dates because I got my personal copy already. Oh, it's huge. It's so big. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I got a very quickly tell you for those of you guys who don't know what this is you probably deserve to get a little bit of an explanation so heritage is a uh, uh, basically a grand a grandiose board game which spans upon generations upon many different centuries where you this is this is basically a vampiric heritage you um do you can embrace various historical figures into particular clans and it all depends on you and you can either um, run very short singular scenarios with yourself or your friends or you can uh, you can do a much longer game at the at the same time. I'm going to open this box to show you. Oh, there we go. So that's the box. I got the more expanded edition with uh, some of the expansion packs. 
uh, but you can get all of them or get them separately in the time span if you prefer on the nice game website i'm going to open this and try to make sure that i can show you some of that on stream there we go it's really really beautiful uh the rule book is like some of the things in this um in this box i would just prefer to um to to put on my wall instead of potentially ruin them with playing the board games so that's the rule book uh there are some of the some of the player cards in here but what i want to show you the most is the artwork which i received with this which is just absolutely beautiful there we go and not not block my lights at the same time it's just absolutely beautiful and i feel like some of these uh, as these are not going to be useful in the game itself are going to actually go on my wall so <laughs> it's beautiful and there are plenty of them uh, look at this wonderful nosferatu lady so good uh, there's uh, so much content which i'm going to just show you very briefly because it would take me so much on the stream but you would get a big box of a lot of cards <laughs> and uh, a lot of content. As much as this may seem kind of intimidating, the rules of this game are actually fairly simple. It's just that because there are so many different characters and so many different events spanning uh, across the centuries uh, and that you can basically drag the campaign in this game for a very long time, uh, that's why you have so many cards. And uh, there's also, of course, different clans, uh, cards depending on the clans. Uh, which are included in the game and uh, yeah it's there's a lot of content in there but the rules per se are not not that that difficult i'm going to actually showcase you some of the rules and uh, talk a little bit more about how to play this game in the future on this channel but next week we're going to have developers joining us to uh, tell you all that firsthand and you can also visit the very brand new website of vampire the masquerade heritage which is vtm heritage how do you call this this line VTM heritage. <laughs> that's that's how I'm going to call it. dot com. Um, it's uh, it's it has the rule book, so you can actually peek inside and see uh, whether this uh, the rules of this game are up to your uh, taste. And uh, it has a lot of the artwork and information on the game itself. So uh, the game is being currently shipped to the backers and retailer, the retailers. And of course, considering the buffer time, the possible uh, delays in deliveries, um, the plan for the latest deliveries is the second week of December. And retailers will be uh, selling Heritage for Christmas, the season, for holiday season. And uh, the game is currently available in English and German worldwide. And it will also be available through separate publishers in French, Spanish, Italian, Portuguese and Russian. It's not an underscore. People are, <laughs> are trying to fix my, um, my spelling of, of the link. It's uh, VTM, the, the, the little line heritage.com the little line which i for some reason cannot remind myself how it's how it sounds in english but you know that's that's what you do when you're not a native english speaker and speaking of uh, successful uh, deliveries and successful hyphen there we go hyphen <laughs> vtm hyphen heritage.com is that right? I think it's right. <laughs> you can test it out. I will post it in the um, in the description of the YouTube video uh, once this stream is going to be on YouTube and I'm going to post it in the chat later on. You solved the mystery. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, speaking of successful shipping, uh, I've also seen people receiving their copies of Vampire the Masquerade Vendetta. So if you backed Vendetta on Kickstarter, you can absolutely expect your copy arriving very soon or already there. Uh, so check your, check your mailboxes. And uh, of course, we're going to talk about yet another game, which I am going to cover finally in depth on the new show in the future, which is Vampire the Eternal Struggle, fifth edition. Uh, there were some initial delays, which were mostly caused by the situation in the world and the situation with the publishing. There is an ice cream truck outside of my window. I hope you won't hear it because it will ruin the mood. <laughs> Um, the fifth edition of Vampire the, Mas the Vampire the Eternal Struggle is available right now and uh, you can visit blackchantry.com to get the full uh, list of cards available in the decks of uh, Malkavian, Nosferatu, Toriador, Tremere and Ventru clans. It's being uh, basically shipped worldwide and the countries that received the first batch 
are as follows. If you want to get your game in your local game stores, if you want to uh, basically uh, go and check out whether the Eternal Struggles 5th edition is available uh, out there, you can expect it in the countries such as Norway, Sweden, Finland, Lithuania, Poland, Germany, Luxembourg, Czech Republic, Belgium, UK, France, Spain, Italy, Israel, Japan, Singapore, Australia, South Africa, Chile, Canada, and USA. So that's currently uh, where VTS first batch has arrived and so where it should be available. Uh, if not now, then very soon. And if you are from any other country which is not on this very long list, then you can let Black Chantry know and they should give you back the information on the availability. And of course, if you want the full list again, because saying it on stream out loud is, is very quick and uh, it doesn't give you probably the proper look on the, on the countries with availability, you can check it out on blackchantry.com. I would love to have VTS devs on one of the streams in the future to also talk about how the fifth edition is different from the previous edition of the Eternal Struggle. But if you don't know this game so far, it's, uh, it's very much of a one of the cult classic uh, vampire card games with a lot of tournaments around the world, which happened over the span of years. And uh, we were waiting for the fifth edition for a long time and we are super happy to deliver. So yeah, that's it for today, guys. I know it was a, a little bit of a shorter one, but uh, I hope that uh, this information mostly focused on the board games and music was interesting to you. Uh, we're going to meet next week and we will probably already talk a little bit more about the TTRPGs. I think that's, <laughs> that's going to be a proper date for that. And uh, of course, uh, if you want more information about all the things that we're talking about here right now, go to our Discord channel. I'll be linking everything uh, of importance in there. And if you have any questions about the products that I was talking about today, about uh, literally everything that we're doing, you can always ping me there because I'm there always. So yeah, thank you so much guys for joining today. And remember, don't get lost in the night. Eat yourself some, some great turkey or drink its blood, depending on what you prefer. And uh, be thankful for the rest of the family because they're actually really cool people. And I'm very happy that we have so many awesome folks joining us and just chilling. <laughs> thank you and see you next week.